Is the harpsichord dead or did Sound Iron manage to resurrect and turn it into a contemporary marvel? Let's find out. The harpsichord, a keyboard sensation from the 16th to mid 18th century, once ruled European music. This versatile instrument was a star in both Renaissance and Baroque compositions, shining both as a accompanist and a soloist. The strings were plucked with quills rather than struck with hammers, so a key could only produce one velocity. The harpsichord's plucked strings offered a rich, clear sound that enriched the complex melodies of Baroque music. Sound Iron sampled a prestigious 18th century Italian Bizzi harpsichord belonging to Claudia Ferrero. The instrument has been carefully recorded in order to preserve the unique sound characteristics of both of the instrument and the room of San Raffaele Cinema here in Italy. So it's no wonder that with this library you can do something like this. What if I told you that even what you're about to hear now was done entirely with harpsichord with no external effects or plugins? Let's dive into the library. I suggest we first have a look at the interface, at the instrument, what it has to offer, and then I will go through the three cues that you already heard in the intro, what precisely I did there with harpsichord. So in true sound iron fashion, you do get the instrument with four layers. If you click through the layers, you see the color here changes and Let's start with layer one. You do have a close mic and a far mic. Let's go for the far mic. And in here you do find the piano register. You do have here an extended range button. If you switch it off, this is precisely the keyboard and the keys that the harpsichord has to offer. If you need more, then you can switch on the extended range just to expand the playing, even if those samples obviously then are stretched. These are, these are not sampled because their original harpsichord didn't have those notes. Then you do have the Forte register. And it doesn't stop here. You do get them layered. You can continue with glisses and I use them in my demo track. And they are amazing in my opinion. It's this stuff that makes a library so much more advanced. Apart from the glisses, you do have slides. Then you do have something which I really, really find cool percussion. They hit and stroke and whatsoever. The harpsichord, you know, I use that here in my demo track. That's just the percussion of the harpsichord. <laughs> I like this stuff. Then you do have... Um, the strings plucked. You do have 
the strings scrapes. And you do have the string taps. And this was only the far mic. You have the same on the close mic, but they took it a step further. You have ambiences. Out of that sampled material, they created this stuff. Pretty cool. There are 20 of those. It doesn't stop here. After the ambiences, you even get some sub synth sustains. If you need to add some more body, you have the sine waves, the sine soft, warm, square, hard. So there is a lot of stuff to discover even in here. And then you do have the last category, the sub synth staccatos. Pretty neat, pretty neat. Even here you do have various stuff. To continue a little bit here on the interface, let's go back to the far mics and just go to the piano register. You can switch on here the advanced tab where you do have a low frequency oscillator. You do have a filter. And you do have, and that's pretty cool, the arpeggiator. You can switch this on. On the mode you have the normal mode, but you do have even the glissandi here. You know, the rate, obviously, you can take a quicker or a slower rate. Then up, down, stuff like this. You do have even the strums. Which even here you can... Pretty nice. And here you do have four layer one. You see, we're still on purple. The volume, the attack, the offset, the release, the width, the vibrato, depth, the panning, and the pitch. But this is a sound iron instrument, so it doesn't stop here on one layer only. No, you have up to four layers that you can combine. As you see, layer two, three, and four are switched off at the moment. You can switch them on to your likings on every layer as you click. That's pretty neat. Well done, Sound Iron. The color of the buttons change. So you right away see on which layer you are working. And then you choose just here the sounds that you want for layer one, two, three, and four. And it doesn't even stop here. The engine goes a step further. You have here the layer A and the layer B were on every layer that you have here. This one is at none. I set this to layer A, for example. I switch off the arpeggiator. Then layer two. I set it to layer B, layer three, to layer B, layer four, to layer B. And then here you have the X, Y fade here. Right click, learn MIDI CC automation. I did this already on the fader of my nano control and then on here, X fading layer A, you have this and then as you I think you can imagine what you can do if you program those four layers appropriately. Pretty, pretty cool. I like those engines. I guess you know if you follow the channel long enough, which by the way, if you haven't subscribed yet, do me a huge favor hit that subscribe button. Thank you. And now just to show you something else, there is even the FX Rack, where you do have the Rack 1 and the Rack 2, where you can place up to eight effects. And now as we go through the demo tracks, I will show you what I did with those effects even. So the very first cue was the one that you heard during the intro. I just used Symphobia staccato for some strings and then place the harpsichord underneath piece by Bach 
and then the same on example two. Here I used Jaeger, first violin, second violin, the viola and the cello for. And the harpsichord underneath. Pretty cool. I mean, this is just classical music and you can use harpsichord for it. But yes, this is really a contemporary marvel. On my short track Shadow Man, I used the harpsichord and only the harpsichord library. So on track one, what did I do here? I have only layer one and layer two in this case. You see what I did here? I have even heavily effected this thing. There's a delay, there's a distortion and there's a reverb. If I switch this off, then you see there's just a harpsichord on layer one and on layer two, I placed a string tap with an arpeggiator. So this is why I have this sound. But as I said on the effects rack, I have the reverb, I do have the distortion and I do have the delay. This is the sound that I achieved. On the next track, I have the harpsichord, pretty natural. You see, it's only one layer with the piano register, but on the effects, I have a delay and a reverb to have this effect even pretty rhythmical. Then on the next track, I have the percussion as I already showed you. We can, we can dive in directly from here. One layer, only percussion, pretty cool. Then I use the ambiences. I do love the ambiences in this library. Just let it work, do its thing. On the next tracks, I continue with those ambiences. Even here, I have another ambience just panned to the left. I worked a lot with panning on this one. There is the ambience. Two, which is here. Then here I have a sub bass. <laughs> yeah, pretty cool, in my opinion. And then, yeah, at the beginning I have some glissando effects. And I have a slide because I loved a lot even the slide. And the whole piece then even ends with a slide. That's pretty creepy. That's a pretty creepy one. And I'm nearly sure that's it this is what i want to tell you about harpsichord as i really liked the instrument as it's so versatile really from baroque music to contemporary music all with one library in in my opinion a very complex and very massive and very potent engine i suggest now we listen again to two of those tracks just to show you again in context how harpsichord can sound and that's it from my side for today Make good music always. See you in the next video or in the next live stream. Bye-bye.